Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome here to Frontier Regional High School for some high school football here on BFCAT. I'm Bobby C. along with Tom Alber. We're excited to be here tonight for a matchup between the Frontier Red Hawks and the Palmer Panthers. I can tell you that last week, Frontier Red Hawks ended up picking up their first win of the season. It turned out to be a pretty good game, and I'll tell you that Ian Burt ended up with 148 yards on the offense, and I'll tell you that turned out to be pretty good. He ended up having a great game for his team, picking up that 12-6 win over Ware. Now, last year, Ware was loaded, and they ended up pretty much pounding everybody, Tom, where yep. they ended up beating Frontier last year 36 to nothing. Wow. That, 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 was, that was crazy. Uh, just to think that Frontier could overcome that, you know. They kind of went in with, um, like, almost like nothing – Nothing was going to phase them, you know? <laughs> well, the most important thing is, is that came into the season this year knowing that they want to be able to improve from their record last year, which was 3-7, and seven, and they've been able to get off to a good start, and they could be 2-0 and oh after tonight with the game against the Panthers. Now let's talk about the Panthers a little bit. They are also looking to be able to continue to do well on the season, and they're going to be a little bit of a different seat, uh, site this year because they were a team that did a lot of passing last year. Well, this year you're going to see a lot more of the run game. Well, of course, we want folks to know that they made the Division Eight tournament a season ago, and Palmer ended up kicking off their season with an easy job of a win even though that it looked like a 12-6 score they pretty much dominated most of the game and pulled off the 12-6 win over Pathfinder well Palmer looking to be able to do some work with their first year starter Matt Santos this kid's only a freshman yeah I mean you got both uh both quarterbacks they're both freshmen so it's definitely gonna be interesting and I, I know Frontier they ran the ball a lot last year uh, and this year they use that double edge uh, run play, and it it works for them. So, well, what we're hoping for here tonight is, of course, a good game. But we also have to remember that there are a couple of guys who can able to do the job when it comes to being on the ground. And one of those kids is from Palmer. His name is Keith Lavalley. He ended up getting the ball 25 times for 91 yards and a touchdown last week in their win over Pathfinder. And there's another kid who's also been able to be one of their decent receivers, and his name is Carter Benoit. So Carter is hoping to, to try to get some open against the defensive frontier, but as we looked at the game last week, Frontier really tightened up their defense at the end of the game, and that is the reason why they picked up that win over Ware. Yep, they, uh, they, they definitely ran the ball really well, and their defense just clutched up at the end, um, and they, they knew that... Um, where it was going to run the ball, and uh, they just kind of stepped up big time and picked up the win for Frontier. So, You know, defense, I've always said this for years, defense wins games, but, boy, a couple of guys have been able to get it done, and especially the great job by Ian Burt, the running back, having a great game. Also, we can't forget about the kids, and we're talking about a kid as well, Aiden Dredge. You know, we got the Dredge brothers, you know, these guys are young, and they're looking to be able to hopefully be able to mix things up a little get bit against Pioneer, I mean, uh, against Pathfinder. And uh, that's one of the goals that they're hoping to be able to do here today is to be able to continue moving the ball. And we'll have that for you right here on the FCAT here today. And we're going to be getting ready for our announcement of our starting lineups. We'll also have information that we'll share with you, of course, with our national anthem. And we're just a few minutes away from being able to get our football game underway here at Frontier Regional here tonight. And right now, a very slow arriving crowd as well. Very quiet here at Frontier. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Frontier Regional School for where tonight the Red Hawks welcome the Panthers from Palmer High School. The starting lineup for the Panthers at center is number 57, Damon Cardinalis. The guards are number 65, Jared Perry, and number 71, Andrew Haley. The tackles are 78, Dominic Allen, and number 55, Jason Cousineau. The tight end, number 45, Carter Benoit. The wide receivers are 82, Tanner Kirk, and number 21, Nathan Childs. Fullback is number 12, Dylan Dory. Running back, number 3, Keith Lavalley. 
And taking the snaps tonight for the Panthers is number five, Matthew Santos. Palmer is coached by Matt Marciniak. Starting offense for the Red Hawks. That's center, number 67, Ethan Bryant. The guards are 52, Wyatt Eads. And number 54, Alex Schreiber. Tackle 61, Aiden West. And number 78, Javion Cabrera. Tight end is number 24, Eddie Miskowski. The fullback, number 10, Caden James. Halfback, number 9, Sean Kirkendall. Wide receivers are number 2, Ian Burke. And number 4, Braden Arsenal. And under center tonight, number 11, Aiden Dredge. The Hawks are coached by Mr. Scott Dredge. And we still are in need of three members for the chain crew. And until we get them, we'll be waiting. All right, so there you go. Got the chance to be able to hear who our starting lineups are. Uh, looks like that we're going to have to wait for three volunteers to be able to get the chain gang under control. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to start the game because we need them to be able to move the chains and also to be able to let us know what down it is. <laughs> so they're still in need of three more volunteers. And like I said, a very slow arriving crowd here at Frontier here tonight. So, Tom, yeah. um, one of the things that I think that, you know, is exciting is the fact that they picked up a win last week. They ended up only 3-7 and seven last year. So, as far as Coach Scott Dredge is concerned, he's very pleased with the way his team is being able to start off the year. And he's hoping for a couple of big wins. And next week, it's going to be a fun one as Frontier will be hosting Greenfield. That'll be coming here to South Deerfield. Yeah. So Greenfield and Frontier usually brings a nice crowd as well. So that should be exciting for next Friday night. But right now we're uh, just uh, waiting, the waiting game of being able to get three volunteers so that we can be able to start this football game. Yeah, Greenfield versus Frontier, any any sort of matchup in any sport, it's, that's always fun to watch. <laughs> You know, I don't know if you had a chance to do anything with the baseball this year, but over the past few years, the one thing that we have noticed is that good old Coach Skinny has been able to get the best of Coach Shushnik up there in Greenfield with Frontier being able to pretty much pull off games against Greenfield in baseball. And here come the Hawks. It's exciting when you can be able to have a night like tonight it is like a perfect night for football you know if these kids had to play three weeks ago I'll tell you they'd be pretty much in a bad place let me just tell you I just can't imagine being out there on a football field 95 degrees trying to play football these kids are in for a great night of football here tonight with the weather and I do see a couple of volunteers hanging over there talking to the refs so it looks like we might have our chain crew that we need to be able to move this game forward of course, the captains are going to be going out to meet with the refs. We'll have that coming up for you. And then we'll figure out who's going to receive and who's going to be defending. And here comes Palmer making their way to their sideline. You know, I remember years ago, used to come to a football game on a Friday night when it first got started. And the old Friday night lights, Tom, and... The, you, you couldn't even get in the bleachers. It was that busy. And they had the band here, and there was just a lot of noise and a lot of action. And things have really changed a lot. Yeah, that, I think one of those things is because of COVID, you know, that I guess a lot of people just don't want to come out. Um, also, a lot of the, the teams have gotten smaller compared to what they used to be. Jason um, For the Red Hawks. Number nine, Sean Kirkendall. And like number Mohawk, 11, they Dredge. used to have a, number 54, a, a team, Slaughter. I know that. And number um, 61, and They combined with Greenfield now in like two other schools, right? They did. Matter of fact, right now they're sitting at four schools representing the one green wave, and that is Pioneer, Turners, Mohawk, and Greenfield all under the same umbrella. And still Frontier has more kids than the school with four teams from four schools. Mm -hmm. Which I hate to say is pretty scary. <laughs> yep, Freddie said, Fre Fred Barasa said, well, we got one from Mohawk, two, one Turners, and two Pine. Yeah, so four kids just off. Yeah, there you go. Bomber will receive the opening. Yeah, yeah. Three schools, four kids. 
All right, they're coming back to get pumped up with their kids. <laughs> there it is. I love the light show. I love the light show with number 54, of Frontier. That's pretty cool there by Alex Schreiber. This time we would ask everyone to please rise as we honor America by playing our national anthem. Just about ready for some football here at Frontier. Frontier Palmer here on the FCAT. Number 15, Jesse Duriel to kick off for the Hawks. And we turn things over to our play-by-play -play guy here today, Tom Albert. So uh, Jesse uh, Dubriel is gonna kick it off for Frontier. And it looks like um, Drew McClary will uh, be receiving. All right. This kid's a good soccer player. He's got a nice boot. There you go. He's going to run it up the middle, and he breaks one tackle. And then he gets tackled around the 30-yard uh, line. West on the stop for the Red Hawks. Nice but tackle right there by West to be able to make the stop, but good field position right here for Palmer as they will have the ball first and 10 from the 31-yard line. So it's Matt Stan Santos, uh, quarterback for the, uh, for the Panthers. Yeah, and he is only a freshman. Gonna like the ball. He hands it off and probably gained it two yards. Oh boy, that was all lined up right there. Excellent job by the Frontier D. Only gave up about a yard and a half on that one, Tom. That's that's what you want to see. Yeah, I mean that's a great way to start the game. You do a couple more of those, and you're gonna get a punt. You're gonna have a ball. That's what you want. So. Santos is uh, still back there. Two receivers, one on either side. And there's a flag on the play. Looks like a false start false against Palmer. Start on Palmer, five yard penalty. Second and 14. Well, now you just buried yourself a little bit there if you're Palmer because now you're at a second down. And about 15. Yeah, and Frontier, they just, they got to make a couple more stops and they'll get the ball back, so. Yep, this is a big spot right here for the D, especially here on second down. Oh, it's a fumble on the play. Fumble on the play. Nice recovery right there by Palmer to be able to get on top of it, but there you go. Recovered by Dylan Doherty. That's going to set up third and... Third and long. Yep. Third and 14 for Palmer. You know, they only threw the ball. They only threw the ball five times, Palmer, last week. That's it. Five times. This right here is probably a place where they need to throw the ball. Yeah, I don't think you can run the ball. 
on third and 14. Well, especially when you've already fumbled the ball and the defense stuffed you on the first play. Yep. Oh, another false start. Offside on the Red Hawks. Oh, oh. wow. An approachment call. That's one of those uh, ones that helps Palmer. Yeah, they got the, the five. They got that back. five back that they just lost. So now you're sitting here at third down and about ten. Say nine. I'll tell you right now, if Palmer ends up getting a first down, is that penalty will definitely come in as a big help to them. Yep. Santos hikes the ball. He hands it off. Nice tackle. That was a beautiful job right there by James to be able to make that play. And now they're bringing out the punt. Punt team's coming out. Yeah, that was a good job by Frontier just kind of stuffing him there. And uh, Ian Burt is back for Frontier to receive the ball. Deep Valley back to punt for the Panthers. Ian Burt, deep for the Red Hawks. Nice uh, high punt. Fielded cleanly by Ian. He's going to run up the right side. Oh, and nice tackle so right there return. by Palmer to be able to knock him down. Damian Cardinalis on a stop for the Panthers. First and ten, Red Hawks. Red Hawks have the ball for the first time here tonight. From the yeah, frontier, pretty good field position, too. Want to welcome you here to the FCAT. It's high school football here tonight as the Red Hawks take on the Palmer Panthers. Bobby C. and Tom Albert, we're glad to be here with you here tonight. I want to thank our crew for being here as well, giving you a chance to enjoy the game here on the FCAT. That uh, double wedge run that they like to do. So, Dredge is uh, the quarterback. Oh, and they just grabbed him right from the center, missed his assignment on that play. They literally just stuck the hand right across the line to make that play. Nice job right there by Palmer. Lost a two, second and twelve. I mean, literally the center playing right up the middle for Palmer literally stuck his mitt <laughs> right over the center of Frontier and literally grabbed Dredge right by the shirt, threw him on the ground. Dredge. In the backfield, he hikes the ball. He's going to run with it, pitch it off to Ian Burt. And he. Another nice Ian job Burt right there go. by Palmer. Boy, they've really stepped things up on the defensive end. Looking good here so far. Awesome. And they put Frontier back in the hole. Yeah. Third and 14 for the Red Hawks. Third and 14. That's. Uh, good defense right there by Palmer. They look really good. Yep. Quick to the ball as well. Because Ian Burt's pretty fast, and they were right on his grill. See what kind of play they come up with this time. I think you got to try to throw the ball. Looks like they're going to get into the shotgun, which is smart. Dredge, he looks like he's going to get rushed. Oh. Oh. That was one of those ones where he literally, even if he got the ball, it was only going to get you a yard. Yeah. So Frontier is going to have to punt. Yeah, so two straight punts by or by both teams. So. Yep, both teams gave it their first shot, and both teams had to punt. Good defense, though. Both teams doing a nice job on the defensive end. It's going to be uh, Sean Kirkendall kicking. The punt for the Hawks. Dylan Doherty back to receive for Palmer. Ooh, oh, it's over the head. No. Oh, oh, what a tackle. Wow, that is just a great job by Palmer to be able to get in there. And that tough snap was way over the head of Kirkendall. He wasn't going to get that. Yep. So. 
Palmer's back at it again here, Tom. Yeah, and they're already knocking on the door, so. They sure are. Boy, that was a really nice job being able to hustle to make that play. Tough one. That, that thing sailed over the head of Kirkendall. He wasn't able to get it. First and 10 Panthers at the Frontier 18-yard line. And hand off. Goes up the middle. On. Cooper Valley on the carry. Gets a not couple a bad, yards. Not, not a bad job right there. Picked up pr some pretty good yards. Sean Kirkendall on the stop. Yeah. Gain of about Gain six. Of six, second and four. So it's, yeah, freshman versus freshman quarterback. That's it. Matt Santos. He has one man on his right. Or he's going to hand it off and Valley on a carry. looks like wow. they're going to get the first down. Looks like they got the first down. Yeah, either that or right on the chains. Carry just short of a first down. Oh. It'll be second and less than a yard. Yep. Third down. So it's a big play right here. First down. They did give first him the first and goal. Down. They gave him the first and goal. Okay, they gave, him the, they gave it to him. So he's got a man on his right and left. He's going to end it off. And he, he's going to get in there for a touchdown. There you go. Dory. Touchdown, Palmer. All right, Panther, touchdown. That was uh, Dylan uh, Doherty. Doherty, yep. Doherty. All right, so he gets the six. And they're yeah, going to go for two. two point conversion. I don't think I've ever seen high school uh, someone kick the, for the one. You yeah, know. we only got a couple around our area that do that. Oh, nice job. You <laughs> just barely touched. is successful. Number three, Keith LaValle. 5.51 remaining here in the first quarter. The Palmer Panthers, eight. Frontier Red Hawks, nothing. Well, there you have it. First blood has already been out there for Palmer to be able to put the ball in between the old lines, and there you have it, 8 nothing. Nice job right there being able to capitalize on that really high snap that Kirkendall couldn't get when he was ready to punt the ball, and it ended up turning into 8 points for Palmer. Yeah, that, that's something they're going to kind of look back. We're going to look back and... Five. Um, could decide the game right there. I mean, you never you never know. Well, we get the ball back now, so now you got to be able to take advantage of every opportunity. you got to hope that your guys will block up front. Maybe they can get themselves a nice opportunity at good field position. So it's... Matt Santos on the kick. Nice boot. Nice run there by. Uh, nice job by Bray. Braden Arsenal. Damon Cardinalis on the stop. And another First good tackle right Hawks. there. I'll tell you right now, the defensive First side of Palmer here. looks very good. They did a nice job being able to make the play. And now, Frontier will have the ball. First and 10. And it looks like uh, they got a man on each side, so and a man in the backfield. Wouldn't surprise me if they go and try to run it. Yep. Oh, that was a great stick right there. Kirkendall on the carry. Excellent job Keep right the there. The Tell you right now, Lavalley, tough kid. He came barreling right in there to make that play. Gain of a yard, second and nine. Right now, the offensive line is really having a hard time against the defensive line of Palmer. Yeah, they did struggle a little bit with that last week. Um, and then they were finally able to, you know, tighten that up at, towards the end of the game, so. 
And Dredge just going to hand it off again. Oh, nothing. Nice job right there by Palmer. Boy, they're just getting it done. Yeah, that's going to set up third in the round eight. And I'll tell you something right now. They're going to have to try to find a way to move this ball. Maybe a throw. Only problem is the biggest problem that they're having right now is the frontier offense. Their offensive line hasn't been able to shut down the defensive line, and that's not going to make it easy to throw a pass either. No, you you got you got to stop the uh, the offensive line. That does do a, it does do a lot. You know, you got to give your quarterback some time to either throw the ball or pass the ball off, or hand the ball. And an opportunity to pass. They threw it. Oh, oh and it was right in. Got in that pass interference. Well, that's a big play right there. That, that was a beautiful pass. And with that, that gives Frontier a first down. So Frontier will be able to get the ball and looks like a first down. And they'll have the ball into oh. Palmer territory. All right, Tom, maybe they can uh, take advantage of a, an opportunity of a Palmer penalty. Yeah, this is a big chance for Frontier. Dredge, he's going to pitch it off. And a nice good job run. right oh. there by Braden there. Uh, Braden Arsenal did a great job. He's all pumped up. <laughs> he went right over two guys. Nice job right there by Braden to be able to pick up four yards on the play, almost five. So we'll call it from the we'll call it second down and six. That was a nice pitch right at the last minute too, Tom. Yeah. Where he was able to get the ball into the hands of Arsenal. I did I did see a lot of that last Friday. Um, Dredge usually he would pitch it off to Ian Burt and Ian Burt would run up the right or left side. Yep. So another handoff. Hey, so nice run right, right there. There you go. That was uh, Sean Kirkendall. Yeah, now what you do is you got to be able to Third make sure that you pick up. You're, you're in four down territory now, really. You know, you're you're inside the 40. So this this is a great opportunity to Frontier to be able to take advantage of two plays to be able to pick up this first down. Let's see what they got up their sleeve here on third down. Looks like they're going to do the double. double uh, the double wing. Mm, yep. Oh, and Dredge <laughs> takes it himself. Nice job. Oh, oh is that Bird? Oh, that was, that was a really slick play right there. Yep. Guess it even fooled me. <laughs> I, th I, thought he I thought he kept it himself, too. Boy, he must have slid that right underneath there just enough because I thought it was just Dredge when he so – really, he did the lead block, but it was yep. a great job. That was a great call by Frontier right there. Excellent call. And the, the double wing, it gives him a lot of options, so – they're going to run it again. Ah, uh, you know it's too bad because that was a little bit of a false start on Frontier. They waited a little too long to call that play. When Palmer started to move in and then he kept going, he ended up literally fooling his own men. So yeah. that was a five-yard penalty that cost Frontier right there. So you're still in four down territory again here, no matter what. So now's your chance to be able to regroup here, first and 15. Now, now he's he's got two in the backfield and one on either side, wide receivers. Dredge is going to kind of throw it. Ah. 
That didn't work out. It broke. That was a broken play right there. Second down and 15. So now you got second down and 15. He literally tried to shift his arm and try to take the ball from his right hand and put it into his left and push it to his player. But unfortunately, that landed on the ground, and that's why they're in the position they're in right now at second down and 15. Yeah, I, I want to see another pass play because it, lo it looked good, um, the one he did get out. So Yeah, it had a nice spiral. It was, it was Honestly, it was just right in the hands of Arsenal, he probably could have had that. Yep, they're gonna throw, they're going three. They got trips on the right side. Throw it off to Ian Burke. Oh, that's a great play right there. Excellent job right there by Keith Lavalley from Palmer. He was all over that play. Kid's good. Yep. He has a Third he's in, got a good. For the Hawks. He's got a good eye, is what he's got. He was able to sniff that baby right out as well, and absolutely nothing except for a yard on that one. Third and fourteen for the Red Hawks. Still down in four down territory, so you got a couple of plays. Try to get that first down. Yeah, and they got three three wide receivers on the right. Or on the left. Yep, me. they went to the left this time. Wouldn't be surprised if they went to the right, though. Dredd's going to air it out. Oh. oh, that was Dredd's an opportunity that... Kaden James incomplete. Yeah, that brings James up a fourth down. A fourth down, fourth and 14. Got to go for it. Yep. You got to go for it. No need to punt the ball. You could pin them, but then again, it's better to... At this point particular state that they're in right now they might as well go for it yep they are going to punt oh. wow Dylan Doherty deep for the Panthers one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to cause a turnover yep look at that it's a beautiful boot hey now you got to get him he literally came out of the end zone oh, and he ends up Nice job by Frontier. Good boot, though, there from Kirkendall. Yeah, he, he was making some good kicks the other night as well. Um, he's definitely a good kicker for Frontier. want to welcome you here to our game here on FCAT. It's Frontier and Palmer. I'm Bobby C. along with Tom Albert. Tom is one of the guys that's one of the seasoned folks over here at the FCAT, learning the ropes here with all the different sports that he's been First able to do. And Panthers. glad to be able to fill in for my late brother and I love him dearly and I'm sorry that he's not with us and that's Chris Collins glad to be able to be here to be able to help out our cast here tonight oh there's a ball oh man well too bad because you would have rather you would have rather had the ball second down at 15 instead of first and 15. Yeah. But they ended up uh, calling the penalty, so that's why they'll get that down over. And Palmer, they got to go all the way down the field almost. So. Again, Matt. Santos, he so he handed the ball off. Yep, got a few. Picked up about five. Brought back that five yards well, that he lost from before. By a host of Red Hawks. And that will do it here in the first That's quarter. In the first quarter here from the Frontier Regional School with the score of the Palmer Panthers eight, the Frontier Red Hawks nothing. So there you have it. At the end of one. It's Palmer 8 and Frontier 0. We're back with more here on the FCAT. All right, Tom. So after one, Palmer did a great job on the defensive end. They ended up capitalizing on a turnover. That turnover turned out to be into their favor to be able to get the ball in great position, and they were able to punch in the first touchdown and the two-point conversion. Yeah, it's... Front Frontier or Palmer, they've been pretty dominant on the on, on defensive end. Um, but now they they got to go. Uh, 
from basically the five yard line all the way downfield. Boy, it took a while to get the whistle on that play. Nice job hustling there. Jonathan Raphael Urego on the carry. So Urego ends up picking up four on the play. So now it's third down and two. This is a big defensive opportunity here for the Red Hawks because you know that if you hold them here, yeah. you're going to get that ball back. And they'll, they'll get in good field position. This is a big play here for Palmer. See if the defense can step up here for the Red Hawks. He's going to keep it himself, QB sneak. Yeah, I don't think he got it. Matthew Santos on a carry. Oh. All right, good Sean defensive Kirkendall stand right there by Kirkendall to be able to make that play. No now play. you're fourth sitting and at two fourth and two. And I tell you right now, I wouldn't take any chances with an eight-point lead right now if I was Palmer. Looks like they're bringing out a couple of guys here getting ready to punt the ball. Nobody back here yet for Frontier. And they're, they're going for it. There, no, no, there's a guy back. But there's nobody back for Frontier yeah. at all. They went for it. And I don't think they're going to get it. I don't think they got it. No. <laughs> Excellent defense right there by the Red Hawks to be able to stop it. Yeah, that was that was a great job. I, I mean, I didn't I didn't think they were going for it there. Wow, <laughs> that was a gutsy play right there by Palmer. First down, Red Hawks. That was a really gutsy play with an eight point lead. I don't know if I agree with that one, but it's all right for us, as the Red Hawks are in a really good spot right now to be able to get back in this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Unbelievable. Double wing. Again, run. So, sets yep. up some options for him. Dredd's going to pitch it over. And Arsenal, oh, he got, oh, wow. Now, that's that's an old power drive right there. Allen on a stop for the Panthers. That's a beautiful play. I'll tell you, Palmer has good D. Excellent defensive line. Matter of fact, their okay. defensive line has really taken Second. it to the offensive line of the Red Hawks Second here early in this one. Yeah, they, they've powered house right through their offensive line. So, again, the double wing formation. And he's going to hand it off. All right. I picked up a few on that one. That's probably a gain of about five. Ray Arsenal on the carry. There's Arsenal again. On the stop for the Panthers. Yeah, and maybe four on that one, so third and six. 37. Yeah, they're going to have to do something here. They got two down territory. Can't go to the old reliable. Again, the double wing again. Yeah, well, line's got to be able to stop the other line, and Palmer's been taking over being able to make those plays. Hands it off to Burt. And Burt on a carry. Well, that was a gain of a couple. Nathan Childs on a stop. So that's gonna bring up a fourth down and about four for Frontier with 8.52 left here in the first half. Eight nothing Palmer. All right, this is a big play right yeah. here if you want to extend this opportunity to be able to keep this drive going. Yeah, fourth The only way they're going to keep the drive going, Tom, is if they can make this first down. Yeah, they, they got to convert here. Or they're just going to hand, uh, hand the ball over to Palmer again. Trying to get it. That was a good job with a long count. Hey, that's going to make it. Ian Burt on the carry. Ooh, that might be close. Dominic Allen on a stop. Looks like a first down. Carry it is. First, yeah, first down for the Red Hawks. <laughs> Excellent job being able to pick it, that up. Yeah, and another carry by Ian Burt. So. All right, so we got a timeout here. 
Once again, we got 8-12 left here in the first half. Palmer with the 8-0 lead over the Frontier Redhawks. Want to welcome you here to high school football here on the FCAD. Bobby C. and Tom Alber being able to be with you here tonight. Just want to say that we have a wonderful crew here that's well, uh, keeping the cameras going for us as well. It is a gorgeous night for football. This is truly the crisp air that you really appreciate when you go to a high school football game in September. And boy, tonight is a beauty. Big opportunity here for the Red Hawks yeah, as they will have the ball. Hoping that they can be able to punch it in to be able to get back in this game. We got first and goal for the Red Hawks. If you yeah. notice, the biggest problem that you've seen so far for the Red Hawks is really just being sort of overpowered on the line as the defensive line from Palmer has done an excellent job being able to stop a lot of those runs. Yeah, front, or Palmer's, they, they've been doing a good job on, on defense. Um, and it's a vital vital point of the game. I mean, oh if, you have a, if you have a good defense, uh, there's not much you can do offensively, so... What you got to do right now is you got to be able to take the ball and you got to find a way to punch it in. You got four downs here to do it. It's first and goal. Just oh, that was a nice dish. James on the carry. Oh, that was close. Is he is he right at the one? Really on a stop. Oh yeah, he's just about there. Getting closer and closer. Yeah, second and goal now. So second and goal. Second and goal from the Panther four-yard line. All right, they picked up half of that eight in that one play. May see a, another pass play, you know, never know. Maybe you run it yourself. Gonna give it to Ian Burton, he's gonna go up Ian the right Burton. side. And get in there for a touchdown. Touchdown, Ian Burt. That's a beautiful job right there by Burt to be able to pick up that touchdown. Excellent job. He took advantage of that corner. Never was touched. 8-6 with a opportunity to tie this game with a two-point conversion here for the Red Hawks. Frontier will attempt a two-point conversion. Yeah, and you definitely want to tie the game up here. Oh, yeah, that was an excellent job right there. That was a good call. Matter of fact, Burt was flying around that end, and there was nobody in sight. He didn't even get touched. Yeah, and he's, he's, a, he's a track kid, so yeah. he's fast. So this is where the offensive line's got to step up so they can get this two-point conversion and tie this game. And Dredge gonna take it himself. Oh, so. boy, he no got good. drilled. All right. Seven nineteen remaining here in the first half. The Palmer Panthers eight. The Frontier Red Hawks six. And there you have it. Thank you very much, Dave Blanchett. We're all updated here. Seven minutes, nineteen seconds left here in the first half, and we got ourselves a ball game. There's an example right there of the defense stepping it up for Palmer. That was a nice stick yeah. on the defensive end to be able to prevent that two-point conversion from being good. Yeah, and it keeps them in the lead, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. That means Frontier, if they want to win this game, they're either going to have to kick a field goal or going to have to be able to score again. But when you got Jesse Dubriel, a kid that was a soccer player from Mohawk coming and playing for your football team this year, He's the guy that could probably kick that field goal if ever needed. You just never know, Tom. <laughs> no. This is still a nice boot. Both both teams have good kickers. Yep. Nice tackle. Excellent job right Jordan there. The and there you go. That was a great tackle, and now Palmer's going to have to earn it for sure. Yeah, no, I think that was Alex Schreiber on the It sure was. Tackle. Panthers. So the 20, looks like the 28 and a half yard line right here. So they got some work to do if they want to be able to score again. 
So hopefully the defense can tighten up here for the Red Hawks. Santos, he's going to hand it off. Nice D. Excellent, excellent job out there to be able to get on the ball. There wasn't much going on right there. Maybe a gain of, maybe a gain of one. It's definitely a defensive game so far with a lot of good plays. Both defenses have made some very nice plays. Yeah, and that, that's what you want to see if you're the coach. You want to see your defense make, make big stops and uh, so you can help your offense out, really. Yep. I'm going to bring up something in just a moment for you. Right after this play, I'll bring it up. Another pitch. And he's going to run up the right side well, and carry. get about five yards. Yep, about five. Knocked out of bounds by Ethan Bryant. You know, you really think about the scoring in this game. Think about this. You're up 8 nothing. You went on fourth down, and you did not capitalize. And what did Frontier do? They, they, they scored. scored. Yep. Frontier, they muffed up a bad snap. Palmer had the ball. What did they do? They scored. They scored. <laughs> That's right. These have all happened off turnovers. There you go. The only difference in this one is the two-point conversion was made by Palmer, and that's why they have the two-point lead. Got a timeout. So we got a timeout here. Want to let you know that you're tuning in here to the FCAT. We're here at Frontier Regional High School. High school football here tonight. Tom Albert, also Bobby C., along with the Eckman. We also got Murph. We're very fortunate to be able to have such a great crew here at the FCAT. And also, we can't forget about the Bosch man. It's a big Bosch is in the house as well, our executive director. They do a wonderful job here, and they care about the sports of these kids. And we're very fortunate to be able to have such a great quality of great TV done by this crew. And you had a chance to be able to be at the game last week, and you're going to be here throughout the whole season, Tom. I'll do the best I can to try to make as many games as I can to join you. But I'm very glad that I was able to have the night off tonight to be able to be a part of the crew. Third and seven for the And yeah, we like having you, Bobby. Thank <laughs> you. So it's, it looks like a pass play. Nice pass. That was beautiful. Led the runner and everything. Yeah, that was a perfect pass right there by Santos. And yeah, it was a nice catch. It was like the only one that would have got it was him. He would have been the only guy that would have got that play, too. Yeah, kid did a nice job being able to make that play, and that was a nice tight end move. There you go. Like I said, they only threw the ball five times last week, Palmer did, against Pathfinder. So they've already thrown the ball a couple of times here in the first half. And yeah, no, it was a great conversion. It really was. Beautiful play. Going to hand it off. Nothing. That was a great defensive play right there. That'll take him back for at least three. Yep. Alex Schreiber on the stop for Frontier. Yeah, maybe two. We call it. So second and 12. Just under five minutes to play here in the first half. 8-6 Palmer. Second down and 12 for the Panthers. So Santos, he again has uh, gone his, his right side. He's going to throw. Beautiful pass. Whoa. Whoa. That another nice pass by Santos, the Beautiful freshman pass. right there in the pocket being able to make that play. That was a beauty. Yeah, and Dylan Doherty, uh, just, he dipped out and dodged. Yeah, <laughs> that was a beautiful play. And there you go. Another first down here for the Panthers. Good for a first down into Red Hawk territory at the Frontier 44-yard line. Well, all of a sudden, they were way back at the five-yard line when they started this drive here, Tom. Going to hand it off. And still on his feet. That's a good job well, being able to gang tackle to him. But I'll tell you right now, he picked up another probably four yards on the play. Maybe five. 
be second down and five. Second and six. Yeah, Frontier, they got to tighten up their defense here. Stop Palmer. Yeah, well, they're doing a nice job being able to move the ball. Their offensive line has been able to give Santos enough time to be able to make some of these plays work. Freshman looks pretty comfortable back there. Another pass. This one's incomplete. Well, you know, that was an excellent play right there by Frontier to be able to get in the face of Santos. Third down, 36. From the Hawk, 40 yards. So that, was, that sets up third and six. Well, you know it's going to be four down territory because they're in Frontier territory right now at the 40-yard line. So can't see them. Well, they could punt, but if they weren't going to punt yeah. when they were down <laughs> there, I think they're going to probably go for it here. Ah, uh, there's a false start. And that just cost false them that five yards. The five yard penalty. It'll be third and 11. There you go. Now you're in a situation now where you could punt now if you are stopped by the Red Hawks. Because yeah. now you're sitting at the 46 yard line of the Red Hawks right now with 322 left here in the first half. Still up two. Palmer is leading 8-6. Yeah, and this is a big third down. Another pass play. Nice, nice hands. Boy, he's got good hands. And what a nice pass, too, right there by Santos to be able to get it right into the hands of Doherty. Yeah, again, you just, you just made, got through Frontier's defense. Yeah, well, I'll tell you right now, their pass is working. They're getting open receivers. And Santos is starting to feel very comfortable in that pocket because his offensive line is giving him the time he needs to be able to throw these passes. First and 10, Panthers from the Frontier 27-yard line. Wonder if we'll see another pass by. <laughs> yeah, you might. Oh, another, another run. Yeah, nice job right there. Nice job to be able to make the play, but another decent run, about seven yards right there by Keith LaValle. Who, by the way, had a nice night last week. Picked up a score, had himself 91 yards on 25 carries. He's not getting that much here tonight, though, because Santos has been able to throw some really nice balls in the pocket. Santos, he's got two on the right and two behind him. Going to hand it oh, off. Oh, just missed him. 78 had an opportunity to have Down him right in his carry. mitts and just missed him. But looks three. like another first down. first down. So now you're sitting in even a better place right now if you're Palmer with another first down. First and 10 from the... It's like the 15, 12-yard line. 12 yard line. Okay, we're at the 12. Now's where it gets a little tough for me, trying to see it. So <laughs> I'm going to leave, leave this up to you guys with better eyesight than me. <laughs> I got contacts. All right, all right. <laughs> They need the D right now. This is a big spot for Frontier. Excellent job right there. That's a good tackle right there on the play. Excellent job by Frontier to really stuff that one. Only gain of one. All right. This is the time where you got to really do a gut check. They did that last week to be able to stop where. Well, let's see if they can do it right here against Palmer. Because they are in the red zone. Yeah, it's second and nine. They they got to make another stop. That's it. Don't be surprised if they don't throw the ball. Santos, he's going to hand it off again. Nothing. Maybe a gain of three? Maybe three? Yeah, it looks like maybe three on that. Timeout called by the Panthers. All right, let's talk about this one a little bit here, Tom. Here we go. We, we have a situation right now where it's third down and six. And they are sitting in the 10-yard line, in, you know, so they're in scoring position with an opportunity here. Frontier, if they can make the stop, 
yeah. they got a chance to be able to hold literally a team that has literally run the ball almost this whole quarter. They had Get the ball at the beginning of the quarter. We're sitting here with literally, you know, not a lot of time left in the first half. Yep. And they have had the ball almost the whole time in the third in the second quarter. Third down, third in. Yeah, they they took a lot of time off that clock. So sure did. <laughs> third and six. All right, so here we go. Third down and six. Another big play needs to be made here by the Red Hawks. Santos, he's going to. He's keep got nowhere to go. Oh. Nice job, right there, defensively by the Hawks. Number fifty-two. Clock's running. There's only 32 seconds left here in the half. They got to be able to get it. They they don't want to falter on this opportunity here. This is it. Oh, there's a flag down. That'll stop the clock. start on the Panthers. Five-yard penalty. Fourth and 14. Wow. All of a sudden, the excellent defense by the Hawks and a penalty. Now they're really back there now. Yeah. Matter of fact, they've pretty much... Almost taking themselves out of the red zone here. They're at the 18-yard line. Clock's running. This could be the final play of the half. Yeah, they got 10 seconds. Yep. Oh, oh an opportunity to get that. Oh, yes. Frontier defense steps it up at a time when they need it to. What a play. They'll just take, put a knee on that baby, and that'll probably wrap up our first half here. First down. Yeah, and they, they took the whole quarter, <laughs> and they, they got nothing. <laughs> they literally <laughs> ran that ball the whole. That, well, they ran the ball a lot. That's why the clock kept moving. Yep. That was a quick quarter because of the opportunity of the running that was done and a couple of beautiful passes by Santos to a couple of really decent receivers, and this is just going to be a kneel down, and there you go. It's halftime. That's the end of the first half here from the Frontier Regional School. What's the score? The Palmer Panthers eight, the Frontier Red Hawks. Yeah, Frontier. They they can't that big stop right there. That completely changed uh, Palmer from scoring. So. Sure did, and you know they're going to get the ball to be able to start off the second half as well. So what a way to earn it. Excellent job on the defensive end here by Frontier. They capitalized on a couple of the opportunities, including a chance on a false start that brought the ball back another five yards. So we're sitting here at halftime where Palmer is leading Frontier 8-6. But boy, it could have been a little bit worse. But the defense stepped up when they needed to, and they were able to make that big stop. And now they'll have the ball to kick off the second half here in South Deerfield. Want to welcome you here to the FCAT. It's high school football here on the FCAT. I'm Bobby C. along with Tom Albert. And of course, we got our wonderful crew with us as well. We got the Murph. We got Mr. Bosch, who's done an amazing job as our executive director. And we can't forget about my brother, the Eckman, who is still here as well. You know, it's funny because I have nicknames for all these guys because I've been doing this for so many years with this crew that uh, we're, we're down in nicknames. I just got to figure one out for you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to figure figure out one for you. But uh, what did you think of uh, the first half? Let's let's talk a little bit about what you saw and what you feel. Uh, it, well, the first quarter, you know, Palmer, they, they defensively, they, they're doing really good, um, and their offensive line was – or defensive, defensively they were doing a good job, and then it just converted to to their offense. Um, and then Frontier, they right there, you know, at the end of that uh, the the half, um, they they were able to come up big with that stop. You know what I think is going to happen in this one? I think it's going to come down to literally the line. I think the line's going to win it for him, whether it's Palmer or Frontier. It's going to come down to yeah, what the line could, what the line could do on each seven, side of the ball. Three, yep. two, zero. The uh, offensive line um, for Palmer it looked good there. Yeah. And and then they they just got beat 
uh, right at the end. So, but you got to remember now, you know, they literally took the ball from the five yard line and went all the way down and took the whole quarter just to be able to run that possession. And with that possession that they were able to move the ball, I think those guys started to get tired. And I can totally understand because the defense never really came on the field at all until the last three seconds, and it was a kneel down. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty wild that you can be able to have the ball at the five-yard line and pretty much eat up a whole quarter, and that's exactly what Palmer did. And we'll have to see what happens here in the second half. If that momentum change where we saw the defense doing a great job being able to stop them, now if the offense can be able to move the ball, maybe they can be able to punch one in and we can get this game in the lead of the Red Hawks instead of the Panthers. Yeah, and Palmer, they're still, you know, that two-point conversion could be, the, you know, that could change the game. Um, and Frontier, they uh, last week, they didn't convert on either one, so yep. they haven't converted for um, their three chances that they had. Right. Well, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll have second half action for you coming up here on the FCAT. Once again, we're here at halftime. It's the Palmer Panthers, 8, the Frontier Red Hawks, 6. Well, we're getting ready here for second half action. And the good news Red is Red Hawks are receiving. Matthew Santos to kick off for Palmer. Tell you, Santos, this kid's a good athlete. You know, your quarterback, your kicker, he's built pretty good. He's built pretty good, too, for a freshman. Yeah. He really is. He's got quite the build for a freshman. All right, and we're ready to go. Nice kick. Ian Burt's going to pick it up. He's quick. If he can get an end. Oh, Whoa. his helmet came flying. Was that a Palmer kid's hat? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I'll tell you right now, LaValle is a player. That kid can hit. His, his helmet came flying off about eight yards. First and 10 Red Hawks. All right. From the frontier, 31 yard line. Let's see if we can capitalize and get that first score to be able to take the lead here in the second half. Yeah, in Frontier, they, they did have that one pass play that looked, it, Aiden Dredge looked good, so yeah. I, I, I want to see more of that. So. Well, I'll tell you right <laughs> now, they're going to try to run the ball as best they can, and if they can't, that's when they're going to throw. I think they're going to try to stay on the ground as much as possible. He's going to hand it off. Nothing. And they got nothing on that one. Kirkendall stop. So Kirkendall and ended up getting nothing on that. Matter, matter of fact, it's just going to stay the same. No just a switch to second down in second 10. And 10. Good to see the enthusiasm <laughs> here with the home crowd. Yep, the, the student section's making some noise. Yeah, that's good. See what they come up with here on second down, Tom. Dredge, he's going to pitch it out. And they sniffed that one out. There was a loss of five. Yeah, they went way too far out on that one. They weren't even be able to barely get the ball into the hands of Arsenal. Now you're sitting there at third and 15. Third and 13. They're going to have to really find a way to be able to get themselves out of this hole. This is not fourth down territory, so mm -hmm. they're going to have to find a way to capitalize to get the first down here. Yeah, it may, may see a pass by, you never know. <laughs> yeah. There's three on the left side. And... Looks like Dredge is going to throw it out. Nice pass. Oh, oh and he didn't. He stopped. Ah, you can't stop your route. Dredge's pass in 24. Ian Burke incomplete. Fourth down for the Hawks. Fourth and 13. Yeah, you can't. You you can't stop your route. Are they going to go oh, for it? Uh, no, mm -hmm. you don't want to go for it. Now you're down uh. two. Wow. 
this is this has been quite an interesting <laughs> game here. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> I was gonna say there, there's no. No, I was going to say, he, he already saw what he took advantage of to get the first touchdown. <laughs> Why would you do it? Yep. There you go. That's a nice boot. That's got a lot of height. And he took a fair catch. First and 10 Panthers. That's a good boot. Yeah, Jesse Debriel, he, he's good at kicking. So. Yeah, very good. That was a really nice boot right there. Now the defense is back on the field, just like they were to end that first half where they were able to stop Palmer. Let's see what happens here with their first possession of the second half. Palmer still leading Frontier 8-6. Santos... They look like they're going to throw the ball here. I mean, they got three on the right, so he's going to hand it off, though. Nice job. Excellent job by the defense. Not much there. Maybe two. Yeah, maybe three. Yeah, we'll go with a second down and seven. Gain of three yards, second and seven. Just under 10 minutes left here in the third quarter. Palmer has the ball. Yeah, they, they did a good job of running that clock out in the, in the second quarter. I mean, they, they took the whole quarter to go down the field. They sure did, but with all that work, you'd hope you'd be able to capitalize it. Another penalty. Boy, the penalties have really hurt both teams. Yep. You know, that's been the big problem is second penalties. Penalties. Couple of turnovers. Just when you get yourself in a position to be second down and seven, now you're second down and 12. Yep. He's got um, your, your ego in the, in the back. Oh, he's getting rushed. Nowhere to go, but there's nobody in sight. That could be grounding. No. Nope. Boy, that was not even close. There was nobody even close by. I mean, yeah. there wasn't a white jersey for like 30 yards. <laughs> and they never called it. Wow, that was grounding, man. I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, Fred. They literally were like 30 yards away. All right. Big spot here, third down. Oh, that. What do they, what do they got, a personal foul? Yeah. Oh, they are calling the intentional grounding now? Oh, they did! <laughs> wow! Okay. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> they must have heard us in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> they must have heard us in the booth. All right. This is a great position here for Frontier. Outstanding opportunity right now. Third and 24. Holy. Yeah, they called it. <laughs> well, that was a good call. Third and 24. <laughs> Good run. Nice job by the defense. Jonathan Raphael Uriga on the carry. Sean Kirkendall on the stop. Some help from Caden James. Fourth down for the Panthers. Are they going to do what they did last time? No, I don't think they'll make that mistake <laughs> twice. They're way too far for a first down. You can even see that we got Burt back there waiting for the ball. Oh, the only uh, Santos to punt for Panthers. The only the the really good thing about this is that if it's not a good punt, they're gonna have great field position. Yep. Oh, that <laughs> is a good punt. That's not a good punt at all. Nope. All right, they got the ball in great field position. Inside Palmer territory. Kind of shanked it, shanked it to the left. So. Yep. Well. Momentum change ever since that big stop in the first half. 
Frontier has an opportunity to punch it in. <laughs> Should be interesting on what they're going to do in this series. I'd mix it up a little bit. They're going to do that wing again. They like the double wing. Yeah, they, they did a lot of, uh, last year. With the double wing. Nice pitch. Oh, that's a nice run. That's a first down. Excellent job by Burt. There you go. That's a beautiful way to start off that series. Beautiful job to be able to pick up a first down. Carry good for a Red Hawk first down. All right, right now they are inside the 30. He's got two men out, but he's, I think he's probably gonna run it again. Yeah, I would run it again. Gives it to Burt. You know, that couple. looked like look looked like the ball was handed off when the runner was way too close. And that pretty much gave them nothing except for one. And we're just approaching seven minutes left here in the third quarter. Palmer with the 8-6 lead over Frontier here on the FCAT. Bobby C and Tom Albert here. Also got the Murph, the Boschman, and the Eckman with us here tonight. So the double wing again. It looks like he yeah, took nice it job. Himself. Go! Look at that! <laughs> Dredge, Dredge drove the guy right to the goal line. The quarterback did that. <laughs> <laughs> third down, third and five for the Red Hawks. Well, wow, this is a two down territory because of where they are. So let's see if they can get a couple back here. Be nice if they could just get the first down. Double wing formation again. Yeah, they like the double wing. Hands it off to Burt. Get in there. That's a perfect move. Great cut. And Burt on the carry. That Just should bring up a first down. Marcus Krasinski. Here we good for a Red Hawk first down. <laughs> nice job right there by Burt. That was a great cutback. And we are under six minutes left here in the third first quarter. 10 from the Panther 12 yard line. Yeah. The Red Hawks are driving. Yeah. First down and 10. They're knocking on that door. They are <laughs> knocking on the door, absolutely. And that double wing. Nice pitch to Burt again. A nice job, but he got popped pretty good there, but he and still Burt. was able to pick up a few yards. Looks like maybe six, maybe seven. Oh, he got maybe eight. <laughs> nice eight. job. Second and two. Excellent move right there by Burt. The last two carries were very nice. And like you said, knocking on the door here, Tom. Just approaching five minutes left here in the third quarter. Frontier hoping to punch it in. And that, that, that double wing again. It's worked for him. Another pitch to Burt. Ah, uh, excellent block. Was there, there was no fumble, was there? Fumble on a play. Oh no, because it was, oh wow. That was a huge turnover. All that work to make such great plays. And Palmer. Recovers the fumble. First and 10 Palmer from the Palmer six yard line. Let me write that down. 446 in the third. Fumble. Hopefully that won't come back to get us. Yeah. That hurt us already because of the fact that we're already down two. Well, you got to hold on to the ball. So Palmer takes over. Santos. He's going to hand it off. And yeah, Doherty, and he got nothing. Doherty on a carry. 
Yeah, you got nothing. Matter of fact, you lost a couple. Excellent defense right there by the Red Hawks. That a way to step it up. Excellent job right there to be able to, you don't want to keep the momentum going for the other team when they get a turnover. And that was a nice stop right there by the D. And we're just approaching about four minutes left here in the third quarter. Beautiful night of football here in South Deerfield. So Santos, he's got a man on his right and left again. Yeah. Oh, oh that's a good snap. Play. Safety. Oh. Let's see if we get the safety. We got the safety. We got our two points back. That is awesome. And we get the ball because they got to punt the ball back to us. I was, I was just thinking in my head if they they, they could have gotten a safety and they, they did. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, now we're at 8-8. Eight, eight, and they're gonna have to punt the ball and we're gonna get the ball back. Now yeah, that, that was a huge play. That was, that was a great defensive play. I'll tell you, the defense for Frontier has been very good here tonight. Very good. If you really think about it, if you really think about it, the offense was the one who caused the turnover with the the uh, high snap, right? Yep. So the defense has been pretty solid for Frontier pretty much the whole night. And this game could be won on the defensive end by these great plays, like that safety that we just wrote down. So we got an 8-8 game. And he'll have to Here punt the ball. Punt for Palmer. Ian Burke. We got too many men on the field. Not, not sure. Now they got 11. Free Arsenal, Ian Burke back for the Hawks. Oh, they are allowing them to use a T? Oh, you can? Oh, okay. Oh, oh you do have a choice, okay. Well, he's a good kicker. <laughs> he has a good boot. Matthew Santos to kick off. So he can be able to have a choice of whether he can kick or punt. And he has a good leg. So he's chosen to use the tee. So here we go. That was a nice, nice yeah. long drive punt. Yeah, he's good. Ian Burt, nice job. Excellent job to get into Palmer territory. <laughs> All right. Gavin Smola on a stop for Panthers. Yeah, another good field position for Frontier. Absolutely. For an injured player. Could be a cramp. Yeah, could be a cramp. You know, last year. I attended probably seven high school games, and I saw more kids go down with cramps last year. It was crazy. Yeah, wa water is it's very important. Like um, Staying hydrated, you know, but also it's really hard when you're on the field for a long period of time too, you know, and sometimes it just, it just drains you out. You get, you get drained out by using so much of your energy. So they're stretching out both of his legs, so I know there's got to be some kind of cramping going on there because there's no reason why they would do anything but that type of a procedure unless it was a cramp. And it's not just one leg. They're stretching out both. And he's up. There he yeah. goes. He just was needed a stretch out. Number 63. Yeah, the, the worst feeling in, is getting those cramps in, the, in, in like the middle of the night. Yes. <laughs> Get those major leg cramps. Oh, yeah. I used to get them all the time. You know, it's funny because uh, people ask me what I use to be able to get rid of some of my leg cramps at night. Believe it or not, a tablespoon of mustard. <laughs> I just eat it plain, first not a tablespoon, just eat it. And Hawks. it does something to your system to be able to help you. Yard. So, mustard. 
Yeah, one, one thing, uh, pickle juice. Pickle juice is another thing, too. Yeah. But if you notice, a lot of those have a lot of acid in them, Bull. See, that's why it, it helps. All right. <laughs> Frontier's got the ball back after picking up that safety to make it 8-8. So Dredge, she got two in the two in the backfield again. She's gonna hand it off. Oh, nice job! John Kirkendall on a carry. Yeah, Kirkendall came right out of the backfield with some power. Excellent job right there, and that picked up a nice saw. Uh, uh, six and a half, maybe six yards. Six, second and four. So excellent job coming out of the backfield with that speed. That helped a lot. I'd run that same play. Because that line was able to make that left side open a little bit for him to take that area right there that was opened up by the left tackle and the right tackle. And it looks like they may, may be right. There they go. Mm -hmm. uh, that was right up the middle. Yeah, there was Kirk nothing there for that. Carry. Now you don't want to go up the middle. You want to try to... Raphael Eureka on a stop. Third down. Third and three for the Hawks. You know what you knew is from the Palmer 35 yard line. You run it a couple times, right? Yep. And then you mix it up and then you go to the air. That's what you do. That's how you can be able to take the lead in this one. Is just they're gonna expect the run. So if you can do this and be able to run the ball, pick up a first down, now you get a chance in the next series of downs to be able to mix it up. Like oh, that was a nice handoff. I think he's got a first down. I think he's got a first down. What do you got, fourth and, fourth and one? one for the wow, Lions. fourth and one. Yeah, it's two down territory, Tom. Kind of like sneakily handing off. Yeah. That. <laughs> so th this is a big fourth down. This is a big fourth down. Surprise, the cheering section isn't a little louder. <laughs> Trying to pump up these kids. He's oh, got yeah. it in more. Sean Kirkendall, first down, Red Hawk. Yeah, that's a big play right there. 136 left here in the third quarter. It's third quarter's first been seemed like it's taking forever here, isn't it? <laughs> and we got an 8-8 eight -eight game though. That safety came up huge by the defense, and now the offense. Hoping to be able to punch it in for the lead. Looks like they're going back to the double wing. Yep. Just going to pitch it back. Nice run by Bray. Bray and Arsenal. I think that was another first down maybe. Got another Brandy first down. Urega on the stop. Carry good for a Hawk first down. Nice job right there by Arsenal to be able to pick up that first it's down. From the Palmer 19 yard line. Clock and is. yeah, we're down to the last minute here in the third quarter. Yeah, they're gonna just keep running. It's working. They're wearing down Palmer. He's gonna pick a pitch it back to Braden. All right, Arsenal That's on a carry. excellent job. Good job by the offensive line, starting to open Jason things up Cousin a little bit. Want to stop. Gain of five, second and five. So second and five right now for Frontier. Just under 30 seconds left here in the third quarter. I'll tell you, it's working right now. I think they're wearing down the Palmer off the defensive line finally. Yeah. Took a while. <laughs> Again, double wing. Yeah, it's working. Got to get the playoff. Get that first down. Oh, oh. no. Fumble on a play. Was he down first? Recovered in the end zone for a touchback. Oh, uh -huh. wow. Unbelievable. The end of the third quarter here with the score. Palmer Panthers eight, the Frontier Red Hawks eight. That's one of those plays where you work too hard. And you gotta you gotta just lay down. There you go, another turnover right there. And we just ended the third quarter on another turnover. 
Yeah. The, and that's going to come out. That'll come out to the 20-yard line for Palmer. So Palmer will have the ball to start off the fourth quarter in an 8-8 game. Yeah, they, they were right there. Like, uh. Uh, that is just so frustrating for a coach, too, when you got everything going well. You're wearing down the defense. You're running the ball pretty well. You're being able to pick up first downs. And as you get right to the goal line, you stuck your hand out to reach, and the ball falls out. It's a really tough situation right there for Frontier. They had an opportunity to literally take the lead in this game. I'll tell you, when Coach Dredge sees that video and he sees exactly what happened, he'll be able to explain to his players that when you're that close and we're moving the ball, don't try to just see if you can get it in there because look what happened. It ended up being a touchback. Yep. You want to just hold on to the ball. Exactly. All right. So here we go. Palmer gets the ball here in the fourth quarter. Palmer from their own 20-yard line. And flag on the play. start on the Panthers. Five-yard penalty, first and 15. Tell you right now, they've shot themselves in the foot a few times, too, with penalties, for sure. Yeah, the penalties are big, you know. Well, we got you got two fumbles. First two fumbles in a in one of those uh in one of those uh high snaps. Three big turnovers in this game and definitely a big difference. Cuz this game is literally tied where personally I think Frontiers outplayed Palmer. Yeah. And he's he's their main LaValle for Palmer is their main runner. Him and Doherty. Ooh. Doherty on the carry. Picked Ray up Arsenal a on the stop. about five yards. And a five, second and ten. So second and ten. All right, bud, we'll see what we can do here. So Santa's Losing the Valley, that's a big loss for Palmer right now too, Tom. He's gonna hand it off again. Probably gain about, yeah, about two. Yep. So we call it uh, second down and seven. Third and seven. Yeah, Third. And Ethan Bryan on a stop. Third down, third and six. Big opportunity here for Frontier to be able to put the stop on. And you have to play a little chess game. Frontier holds him here. Should get the ball back. Yeah, and they'll, they'll be in pretty good field position if they do. This is a big play right here for the defense. Hand it off again. Oh. Ooh, you only have a yard away. Now you got a big decision to make. My decision would be I'm punting the ball. It's an 8 8 game. But I'm not coaching Palmer right now. So, will they go for it? I heard someone say go on the other end of the field. <laughs> I heard go. I did. I heard go. So this is a, this is a big fourth <laughs> yeah. down. They're like, come on, let's go. They're getting the fans going here. They're going for it. Here we go. We saw this before. Oh. Another handoff. They uh, got him. Oh nice my. job on the defensive end by Frontier. First and 10, Red Hawks. Wow, that was a great stop. They gambled again, and it did not work for Palmer. Now Twice they gambled in their own area. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. 9.37 left here in the fourth quarter. We're here on the FCAT. Great defensive stand right there by Frontier. Bobby C., Tom Albert, and our crew here at the FCAT. 
giving you some high school football. 9.37 left here in the game. Frontier, great field position. So they're going with the, the, the double wing again. And it worked for him up until the, that fumble. He's going to pitch it back to Arsenal. And he Arsenal on the carry. Tackled by a host of Panthers. Gains and about picked five. Picked up about four or five, yeah. That's not bad. We'll take that all day long. Three, second, and seven for the Hawks. <laughs> Timeout. Palmer. While we got a timeout, we want to let you know we'll talk a little bit about a game that's coming here at Frontier next weekend. And that's where Frontier will be hosting the Greenfield Green Wave. Of course, the Greenfield Green Wave, they ended up losing one of their key players in Trevor Kacheski to an ACL injury. So he is not only out for just this season for football, he's out for all three seasons of his sports, including one of his favorite game, and that is hockey. And unfortunately, that was a really tough blow to not only Trevor, but also to his team. So next week, the Green Wave will be invading Red Hawk territory as they will have a game here next Friday night. Yeah, he's... Trevor, he's, he's really good on, at hockey. He sure know. is. He's <laughs> excellent. And, of course, he's friends with a lot of these kids down here at Frontier, too, because they build that bond with the co-op program for hockey, which includes a lot of really good, talented players that are from Second Frontier. And seven for the Hawks. All right, we're back at it here. A little timeout. The Panther 25. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm having that myself. Now I can hear you. Yeah. All right, going back to the wing. Double wing again. Yep. Pitch. Arsenal. Good hustle. Nice wow. job right there by Bray Arsenal. Big first down for the Hawks. Cousineau on the stop for the Panthers. Carry good for a Hawk first down. First and goal, Frontier. By the way, the Panther nine yard line. Braden Arsenal is a school choice from Greenfield. That's right. He has played with Greenfield for the past few years and now he's a Red Hawk. Nice job right there by the line, too, to be able to open up that hole. Again, double wing. It's working for him. They got to hold the ball, though. They got to hold the ball. Pitched back to Ian Burt. Ian Burt on the carry. That's a nice job. Excellent Carter job by the line. The stop. Now you got to be able just to hold on to the ball, keep the feet the moving. Panther four. So second down and goal from the four for Frontier. Chance to be able to punch one in. We're just approaching eight minutes left here in the game. 8-8 eight, eight tie. Double, another pitch. Nothing. Wow, that was a good stuff right there. There was nothing but white jerseys all over Arsenal on that play. There was nothing there. Excellent job on the defensive end by Palmer. Third and goal from the Panther five-yard line. Boy, defenses are stepping up in this game for sure. Yeah, they, they get like right to the goal line. And I know it. <laughs> now you got yourself two downs to be able to score. Third and goal. Pitch to Ian Burt. I think he's in. Ian Burt. Oh, he's Stop. down. Oh, oh. Is he down to the two? 71, Andrew Haley. Fourth down, fourth and goal. Wow, fourth and goal. Here we go, Tom. Defenses have been excellent in this game on both sides of the ball. 
whether it's Frontier or Palmer, this is a big opportunity for Palmer to be able to make a stand. This could, uh, could decide a game right here. See what's in the playbook here on this one for Frontier. Dredge hands it off to Ian Bird. He's gonna run up the middle and touchdown. Touchdown! There's a red hook in the end zone. Wow, it's a big touchdown right there for Frontier with 6.33 left in the game. Ian Burt picking up his second touchdown of the night. But you want this two-point conversion. You want it. Yeah, 6.30 and Palmer's got two timeouts. So Yeah, you definitely don't want to be sitting here on six. You want to be able to be up by eight. This is a big play right here. Big play right here for the Red Hawk offense to get this two-point conversion. And again, they're double wing, and it worked for him. Dredge always going to air it out. Oh, he can run it back. What are they saying? No. All right. <laughs> Pass intercepted by Matthew Santos. The conversion no good. With 6.33 remaining here in the fourth quarter, the Red Hawks 14, the Palmer Panthers 8. Well, there you go, Tom. We, we found a way to find the end zone. We got the lead. Yep. And this is our first lead of the night. Question is, we got 6.33 left. Can the defense, do they got another big stand in them right here? Yeah. So we got to find out. They, they, they got to step up big. Yes. Jonathan Raphael and Dylan Dory are back for the Panthers. Very true. That is true. You know, their star player on both sides of the ball for Palmer has been out of the game with an injury. Ooh. And he is he was a big help for them, especially in that first half. Raphael Uriga on the return. You know, you don't realize how important a player is until they're not there. Yep. That's when you really find out Ethan how Brandon valuable they are. First and 10, Panthers from the Palmer 35. That was the shortest train I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> that lasted 12 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> it's pretty loud though. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you right now, the defense has been excellent for Frontier, though. It really has. They just got to keep it going. Now the crowd's starting to get into it, knowing they got the lead. 6 23 left here in the game. Hawks up 14 8. Santos, he's going to hand it off. And. Well, that was a big tackle right there by Frontier. Game Excellent job. Bring up an old second down and eight. Could even say close to seven, really. Second and eight for the Panthers. Oof, someone's got a Panther limping off the field. Yeah. Guys are starting to get hurt. 52 hurt himself, too. Another hand nice off. job on the defensive end right there for the Hawks. Here we go on a carry. Alex Schreiber on the stop for the Red Hawks. Tell you right now, the defense has really stepped it up here for Frontier. This is a huge third down play. For Palmer. You know, as the time goes on on the clock, you got to ask yourself, is this two down territory if you're Palmer? And I say, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Depends on what they do here, but... Hopefully no penalties, because they don't want to dig themselves even more of a hole. May, may see a pass play, we, and we do. He's going to air it out. Nice, nice catch. Play. He's down by hitting the ground. Yeah, you're going for it now. You got to. Clock's running. Got to go. You're down six. Fourth down, fourth and three for the Panthers. 
Huge gut check for the D right here for Frontier. If they could stop them here, they got the ball inside Palmer territory. Yeah, and they they made they came up with two big stops earlier. So. Yeah, this is huge. You got the crowd going. <laughs> it's a big play for the D. Santos, oh, he's going to take it himself. He's, oh, he got ooh. it. Nice job. He got that first down. Outstanding job by Santos. Excellent job getting on the outside. That was good. That was very good athleticism right there. Yeah, and he got, he got rushed by... Uh, yeah, but he did a nice job. He took advantage of the whole field. He went all the way around to try to get the outside, and he was able to get in and pick up that first down. Excellent job by the freshman from Palmer. Yeah, and he's keeping his team alive. Yeah, and I'll tell you, the kid is a good athlete. He's a big boy, too. So he's going to hand it off again. He's gonna All right, he picked up three, maybe and four. Your leg going to carry, tackled by a flock of hawks. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you right now, that was look how many guys it took to get that boy down. He's he's a tough kid. <laughs> I had he had two on the side, <laughs> one on the back, one on the front. You know, hey, <laughs> just kept trucking. Right. So there we go, 3.30 left here in the game. Frontier is up six. Palmer driving the ball. Second down and six. He's gonna give it back to him. Yeah, nothing. I think he's tired. I think he's getting tired. Aiden West on a stop for Frontier. Excellent job right there by West. And we're under three minutes. Clock's moving. And they got a timeout. Timeout called by the Panthers. All right, Tom, let's, uh, let's sort of reset everybody here. We're sitting here with 2.58 left in the game. Frontier pretty much was down the whole time. They were able to come back and pick up the six-point lead. Turnovers has definitely been a factor in this game. A couple of decision-making by the Panthers of Palmer and their head coach <laughs> on going for a couple of uh, opportunities that didn't work well for them. Yep. Now the question is, is can they march down the field and can they tie this game? I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna have to wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> Put you out there. But I'll tell you, the Frontier defense has been excellent throughout the night tonight, and this is the time where. They ended up doing the defensive stops they needed last week to pick up the win against Ware. Yep. Well, if they can do the same here tonight, they'll pick up a win against Palmer. And then they bring in the wave. <laughs> the wave comes in next Friday night. Greenfield and Frontier next Friday night for Friday night football. 36 for the Panthers from midfield. Again, here man. we go. Santos, he's going to keep it himself. Nice Ooh. run. Tell you right now, Caden James had an excellent day on the defensive end for Frontier. We got the big four. Here we go. Fourth down and three. Defense right here. And then you know Coach Dredge is going to just run the ball. Got to keep the clock moving. Big defensive play right here for the Hawks. Oh, no, it's deflected. It's intercepted by the Hawks. <laughs> the defense does it again. What a night. The defense has been incredible. What a night for the Frontier D. Hawks take over first and 10 from their own 45-yard line. I'll tell you, what a night for the Frontier defense. Yeah, they Two weeks in a row. And they, they, they stopped them on fourth down three times? Yeah, we got 2.13 left in the game. First down and 10. Palmer's got one timeout, so.
Again, the double wing. Oh! <laughs> Dredge, Dredge, the quarterback, <laughs> laying guys out. <laughs> second and nine. The clock's running, though. That's right. That's why they're taking their time. They have no reason to be they'll They can use that right up. I don't think there's many timeouts left for Palmer either here in the second half. They got one timeout left. Yep. That's it. Pitch to Ian. Now they're going to call a timeout. Yep, they called their final timeout. Palmer's got their final timeout. Ian Burn on a carry. Timeout called by Palmer. All right, so here's the deal, Tom. Down, third and seven, four, you, got one, right you got 123 left here in the game. You're in control. You have the ball. You do a nice job, and you get a first down here. Game, set, match. It's all done. So first down, Hawks got themselves their second win of the year. They were 3-7 and seven last year. What a way to start, and then they bring in the wave next week for a possible 3-0 and o start. All three games at home for Frontier to start th this year. That's sort of unusual because Greenfield, I was looking at their schedule, they're on the road for the first four games. Yeah, that, that is funky. Yeah. You don't, you, don't, you don't normally see that. All right, this first down will do it. That'll seal the deal. I think they know it too. Oh, oh that fine. baby went way up in the air. <laughs> Was it delay a game? False start oh. on the oh, false start. Five yard penalty. Well, that doesn't help you when you want to try to get that first down, right? No, not at all. No, that's a penalty right there. That, 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 that's what I call the bonehead mistake. That's what I call it. Because you're sitting in a position where if you were able to get that first down, you were able to seal the game. Now you got third and 11. It's even making it harder for you to get that first down. And only a couple of seconds went off the clock. We got 120 left here in the game. Frontier up six with the ball. And Palmer with no timeouts. So a Frontier first down will seal the deal here tonight. Gonna hand it off to Ian Burt. Ooh. Oh, 57. By Damon Cardinalis. Wow, that was a beauty, Fourth huh? Down for Frontier. Personal foul. Fourth they got a personal foul. Oh, mm -hmm. that'll give them the first down. <laughs> Means this game's over. That's game. That's it. That wow. tackle wow. just ended this game with a roughing. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Wow. There it is. <laughs> game, set, match. Frontier picks up its second win of the season on a personal foul. All you got to do is, is just kneel. All you got to do is kneel. That's it. Game's over. Oh, he oh you pitched it back. Uh, there's no need for that. Play Arsenal on the carry. Just kneel it. Yeah. And the clock's running. We're at 45 seconds and counting. Take a little time here. <laughs> I would never want to see that. I know, it happens, yes. I know, I don't, yeah, but I don't want to see that tonight, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, just just nail the ball. You got everybody around you. There you go. And there's your game right there. Frontier. The final score for the Red Hawks, 14, the Palmer Panthers, 8. All right. We'll be right back here next Friday night to face the Greenway from Greenfield. Let's run it down quick as we wrap things up for you here on the FCAT here tonight. It all got started with Palmer. They ended up scoring first. Yep. They were able to get the two-point conversion, and they went up 8-0. Then Ian Burt ended up with 7 minutes and 19 seconds left in the half, ends up scoring and giving Frontier a chance to get on the board. It was 8-6. They missed the two-point conversion. Then, all of a sudden, in the second half, after making a huge stop down here at halftime, when Palmer was driving, they found a way to punch it in. The defense stood tall throughout the game. And there you go, Tom. They pick up the 14-8 win. Yeah, that, that was an excellent job by Frontier's defense. I mean, they 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 stopped them, like, right at the goal line. Um, and another big thing was that, uh, that two-point safety. Absolutely. That safety was huge. Matter of fact, when they were down two, that was able to put them in a position of maybe 8-8. Eight, eight. And then when they were able to punch it in, it gave them that opportunity to be able to take the lead. I'll tell you, it takes a lot of pressure off your team when you're able to get that safety and make it 8-8 because they would have had to either kick a field goal or be able to score a touchdown to take the lead against Palmer. But they did everything they needed to do to pick up the 14-8 win. Two pretty tough weeks for them against Ware and Palmer. But guess what? The 3-7 and seven team last year is now 2-0 and all on the new season. Yep. So, all right. Well, hey, <laughs> next week, the Green Wave will be back here at Frontier Regional for another high school basketball game. I mean, football <laughs> game. I always uh, say uh, basketball because I spend so much time here doing that. But for a football game here next week, and it should be another exciting one. And I'll tell you, they got a couple of guys that are really good backs on their team. Big question is, can this defense do exactly what they did to Ware and to Palmer to Greenfield? We'll find out next week. High school football here on the FCAP. On behalf of Tom Albert, I'm Bobby C. along with the X-Man. Also Murph and the Boschman. Thank you guys so much for joining us for high school football. Final score for the final time. Frontier 14 and Palmer 8. Have a great weekend, everyone. <laughs>